Let me read to you a passage from the 10th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 1 to 9. It's the Gospel for the Feast of St. Luke the Evangelist on October the 18th. St. Luke writes, The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the labourers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out labourers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him, but if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house, and eat and drink whatever is offered to you, for the labourer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter, and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. That's from Luke chapter 10 verses 1 to 9 for the feast of St. Luke the Evangelist on October the 18th. What does it suggest to us? Well it gives thoughts to us, it reminds us of St. Luke. What do I mean? Well Luke was not of course one of the twelve nor, as far as I am aware, has he ever been given the title of Apostle, as was St. Paul, who, though an Apostle, was not one of the Twelve either. It is clear that though Christ gave to the Twelve the title of Apostolos, Apostle meaning envoy or ambassador, he did not mean the word Apostle to be restricted to the Twelve. St. Paul, for instance, gives the term a wider application. Further, though Paul possessed the fullness of the Christian priesthood, that is, he was what we now call a bishop, and founded local churches with the authority to ordain presbyters and bishops, I'm not aware of any evidence that Luke was a presbyter, let alone a bishop. St. Paul's words in Colossians chapter 4, verse 11 would imply that he was a Gentile by birth, and in chapter 4, verse 14, that he was a physician. Eusebius has him being born in Antioch, Syria. He was then a fervent and totally committed lay convert to Jesus Christ. The church celebrates him as a saint, though we do not know the story of his conversion. He was the companion of St. Paul on at least part of his second and third missionary journeys, and he attended to Paul during his Caesarean and Roman captivities. Beyond this we know little, except what may be deduced of his Christian mind from the very content of his inspired writing. As a valued friend and companion of St. Paul, one on whom Paul doubtlessly depended for practical assistance, at least as a physician, if not more, he had the benefit of daily association with one of the greatest masters of the gospel message. As a lay convert, Luke's understanding of the gospel then would have been great. We cannot be sure of when and where Luke put his gospel account together, but in Acts chapter 1 verse 1 Luke refers to his for former book, indicating that his gospel was generally completed before the Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. And then, Inasmuch as the Acts of the Apostles does not include Paul's martyrdom, as we see from chapter 28 verse 30 of the Acts, one suspects that the two works were completed during Paul's lifetime. But Paul makes no mention of so signal a production by his valued companion, so we cannot be sure. If Luke's two books were in formation during his travels with Paul, Paul himself would surely have benefited from Luke's careful investigation of the history, even of the very childhood of Jesus Christ. 
The few references to Luke in the letters of St. Paul do not include directly evangelical activity on his part. Doubtlessly, he assisted Paul not only as physician, but in his proclamation of the gospel in places he visited. But this is not the primary feature of Luke's contribution to the work of evangelization. Yet he is known in the tradition and life of the church as Luke the Evangelist. And this is because of his great work of writing the Gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. In the Gospel, at the start of it, he professes to be writing history. And like all good history, it is not a mere annals of events, but enshrines various perspectives on the facts. As a historian, I believe he is comparable with the great Greek and Latin writers. But in his case, he is not a mere historian. He is the instrument of the Holy Spirit who inspired and guided his writing for both his immediate audience and for the ages to come. Now, Luke's two works constitute nearly a quarter of the entire New Testament. And in size, together, they are close behind the corpus of the letters of St. Paul. For the letter to the Hebrews is not now regarded as having been written directly by Paul himself, though it is Pauline. This is the work of a Christian lay convert. The Gospel of St. Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, a man with a profound understanding of the meaning of the Christian Gospel and the work of Jesus Christ and his Church, for he had the best of teachers, and one with a scarcely paralleled command of the facts of the case, due to his own careful investigation of them. All of this he expressed in two timeless documents of limpid beauty and clarity. Could we not regard Luke as a most notable instance of the great contribution to the life of the Church which not only the convert to the Church can make, but which the lay faithful also can make? Each member of Christ's faithful brings his or her own gifts to the mission of Christ and the Church. That mission is to know and love Jesus Christ and to bring the knowledge and love of man's Redeemer to the world. St. Luke the Evangelist has much to teach us of the universal call to holiness and mission. Let us contemplate the winning figure of the modest Luke, quiet, self-effacing, dedicated, most industrious, accomplished. How greatly he loved Christ and his church. How much careful industry must have gone into the production of his gospel about Jesus Christ and of the acts of the apostles about the church. His care with detail his love in bringing it all to fruition, and the unending fruits of holiness which his work has produced and will ever produce to the end of the world, beggar calculation. We know nothing of Luke's childhood and early adulthood, but God was preparing in him a signal instrument for his purposes. Let us learn from the life and work of St. Luke, the evangelist, and place ourselves entirely at the disposal of the Holy Spirit. He will give to our lives their intended meaning and value.